Bitcoin is an asset class. And, and that's a major revolution. If Fidelity and BlackRock and, and if 10 other ETF issuers all agree that, that Bitcoin is an asset class, right, it, it, it should be 10x to 100x bigger than it is right now. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Supporting great content by hitting the cash out and by joining the Patreon. And we have Michael Saylor says Bitcoin can 10x or 100x once the big fund managers come in. And will the Bitcoin ETF allow them to come in? Guys, the only thing that will allow them to come in, of course, is regulation. And the United States is behind on purpose. So therefore, China and the emerging markets can rise. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. GM's Cruise and Google's sister company, Waymo, have some of the largest driverless fleets in America and hope to surpass Uber and Lyft as the next generation of ride-hailing taxis. While both companies acknowledge their technology isn't perfect, they say the vast majority of their rides go smoothly, adding that their own research has found their self-driving cars are in some ways safer than human drivers. But despite all the attention on robo-taxis, transportation experts tell us driverless technology is actually likely to expand faster and farther when it's used to transport goods instead of passengers. This technology is challenging. Berkeley research engineer Stephen Schladover has been studying self-driving cars for 50 years. The systems can actually be designed to be more cautious drivers than they would be if they were carrying passengers. If the vehicle needs to slow down or needs to be deferential to other road users, there's nobody sitting in that vehicle who's getting impatient because they're not getting to their destination in time. Which brings us to the new age of door-to-door -door delivery. The company Neuro has already deployed its self-driving cars to California, Texas, and Arizona for pilot programs where the robocars have delivered food and goods for companies including Walmart, Uber Eats, and Domino's. Almost half of the daily trips taken by Americans are for these local errands that we have to run. Have our robot do your errands for you. Dr. Andrew Clare is chief technology officer for Neuro and invited us into the company's Silicon Valley headquarters to check out how their cars work. Once one arrives at your home, a pin is sent to your phone to unlock your delivery. Please enter your four-digit passcode. And there it is. There it is. Claire says convenience isn't the only thing fueling the technology. He says Neuro's cars are also delivering safety by reducing traffic-related injuries and deaths. The safest trip is a trip that you never had to take in the first place, where you have this vehicle go and get uh, your groceries or your pizza or your laundry for you and bring it back to your home. Neuro's robocars first hit the streets in the Bay Area more than three years ago. Today, there are about 50 in California, but the delivery service has only logged several thousand miles on the road without a human in the car. Waymo and Cruise have each driven roughly 5 million driverless miles and have been in dozens of crashes over the past three years, according to the DMV. Many of them appear to be the fault of other drivers, like when this person ran a red light. But over that same time period, state and federal transportation records show that while in self-driving mode, Neuro's cars haven't been involved in a single accident across the state. What do you credit that to? From the vehicle design uh, to our software design, safety is our number one priority. And we see the fourth industrial revolution being built right in front of our eyes. And we know the NWO steps up the distractions, so the masses are focused on things that don't matter. And we have the auto workers strike going on. And we see the transition to electric vehicles. But guys, we know when it comes to these robots, the robots are going to be able to charge these vehicles themselves. Not only will the car be able to drive itself, but then also a robot can drive the car and charge it. And when you get into delivery, you guys know I've done plenty of videos. They'll be able to deliver your items, but then also we haven't seen the drone takeover yet. And we know Amazon, FedEx, UPS have been testing drones for over 10 years. And remember the crypto teacher told you. 
Big rigs are also speeding ahead with driverless tech. Trucking is a $940 billion industry in the U.S. with more than 13 million trucks that largely rely on highway driving which is typically more predictable and less complicated than city streets. But the trucking industry is down drivers, with a shortage of more than 78,000, which is only expected to double over the next decade. The driving population is really aging rapidly, so they're going to age out and they can't find new drivers. One potential solution is putting robots in control which would also mean fewer pit stops, so trucks can be on the road longer and follow one another more closely, since you can sync driving between different trucks. It's called platooning, and it can dramatically improve gas mileage since there's less wind resistance. Autonomous big rigs are still largely in the testing phase, but the company Too Simple already has driverless trucks on the road in Arizona and China. Imagine a world where you have self-driving trucks um, that can operate 20 hours a day, basically increased freight capacity at a fraction of the price of which today's trucks are being operated. Cheng Lu is Too simple CEO and says cutting gas and human labor means trucking companies could reduce their budgets by 40 percent. And cheaper transportation could mean cheaper goods for consumers. That would considerably reduce costs. Robot trucks have got to go. Hey, hey. But not so fast, says Jason Rabinowitz, a leader with the Teamsters, the nation's largest trucking union. Sign that bill! More than a thousand members recently marched to California's state capitol there you go. Talk to, to support a bill that would require driverless trucks weighing more than 10,000 pounds to always have human safety drivers inside. The Teamsters represent tens of thousands of truck drivers across California and worry autonomous tech could drive away their jobs. Should that be enough of a reason to steer clear of new technology? We welcome new technology. We want to make sure it's safe. It's about jobs, but it's also about safety. You want someone in the cab that could take over if needed? Absolutely. You could have even bigger disasters than we've had with the robot cars just because of the bigger size, scope, and, and weight and speed of these vehicles. The threat to our safety is enormous. And we know delivery drivers, Uber, Lyft, all these workers are going to be out of business. But then, guys, you're looking at the truckers. And even though the vehicles are much bigger, it's easier to get rid of the truckers because these trucks are on the highway. And as you can see, they're already testing them in Arizona. And where else? That's right, guys, China. Remember, in the Fourth Industrial Revolution, all these countries are working on the same plan. Why? Because it's the NWO takeover. And if robots are driving a truck, guys, we know they're not going to fall asleep. They don't need a break. And how do they sell it? The products are going to be a whole lot cheaper. Guys, we're going to go through hyper deflation anyway because it's impossible to pay all this debt. And we can clearly see the unions know about all this technology coming in. And they should have fought it a long time ago because all this technology is ready to roll out. The machines are the new slaves. The only thing that the NWO needs now is that last crisis. And you don't waste it because it's going to allow you to do things that you thought you'd never be able to do. And remember the crypto teacher told you because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Tesla has actually um, uh, tremendous capability in real-world AI. Yes. In fact, it is very far ahead of, of anyone. Any. I know people actually on Twitter prior to our interview were saying, you know, he never gets asked about how advanced his AI is at Tesla. You always talk about the other names. T Tesla AI is, uh, like I said, by, it's like, is it, there's not, I'm not even sure who's second, frankly. Um, why is that? Why, then what, is, what are people not understanding about what you have, and why are we talking so much about ChatGPT and generative AI at OpenAI and what Microsoft's going to be able to do with it, and not about Tesla? I don't know. I mean, people do talk about it online. Um, I, think, I think Tesla will have sort of a ChatGPT moment, maybe the, if, if not this year, I'd say no later than next year. Um, Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. You're, you're going to have a sort, of, a sort of chat GPT moment. Oh, you will. In terms of suddenly it will. Yeah, suddenly three million cars will be able to drive themselves right. with no one. Right. It goes back to that. Right. Yeah. And then five million cars and then 10 million cars. Going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly 
we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance, agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to eight percent of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETF, are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver of the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video.
part one. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Say the villain. Part two. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Say New York. Long COVID 33. Part three. King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.